Welcome back. This is lesson six of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session four, and we will talk about the area under the RUC curve, which is a useful metric for evaluating binary classification models. So in the previous uh, lesson, we talked about the RUC curves as a way of understanding how the model performs across all the thresholds from zero to one. And uh, we managed to plot this chart that shows how well our model is separating uh, churning users from non-churning users. And for the rock curve, what we're interested in is uh, we want to be as close to the ideal point as possible. So let me copy this chart, clean it a little bit. So, okay, we have this uh, RUC curve. And remember that we have this ideal point. So we want our model to be as good to this ideal point. And the ideal point is uh, when true positive rate is one, 100% uh, and false positive rate is zero. So this is the ideal point and we want to be as close as possible to this ideal point. And why one way of quantifying how close we are to this ideal point is measuring the area under the curve. So let's say we have this curve. I'll remove the other curves for a while for now. So let's say we have this uh, curve, the area under this curve. The area under this curve can tell us how good our model is. Because if our model is uh, very close to this ideal point and it has a curve like that, and then of course, area under this curve will be more than, uh, so this is great performance. And this is okay performance. So here, let's say the area under the curve could be 0 0.8, but here for this one can be 0 0.9, for example. Mm. Yeah, I have some problems with pen, so it looks uh, a bit uh, wavy now. Uh, apologies for my handwriting. So this gives us a good way of evaluating the quality of our models. Let's look at a couple of examples. But remember, we have a random model. So random model, it goes like that, basically a straight line. So the area under the rock curve here will be 0 0.5. And the area under the rock curve is often abbreviated as AUC. So AUC here is 0 0.5, it's completely random. And uh, so it's 0 0.5 because this square here, it's uh, one, right? And it's half of that. So that's why uh, it's 0 0.5. And then um, we also talked about the ideal curve. So the ideal curve looks like that. Right? So this is the ideal spot. And uh, in this case, so just uh, for reference, let's add this random baseline. So here, the area under the curve is uh, is one. So these are the two baselines that we have. So our model has to have AUC somewhere between 0 0.5 and 1. So it means that our model will be, so let's, let me quickly draw it. So we have one here and one here. And let me just add the random baseline and copy it. Uh, remember, we said that uh, a model with uh, model with a K performance looks like that. And uh, area under the rock curve in this case is perhaps something like 0 0.8 or 0 0.75, something like this. So this is reasonably good. Then uh, we talked about that we can have a model that looks really great. So it looks like that. It's very close to the ideal spot. Then for this model, the AC can be like 0 0.9. So performance for this one, it's 0 0.9. It's great. And then um, yeah, we can have a model with poor performance, maybe even closer to the baseline, but uh, it looks like that. So here, area under the curve will be maybe 6, 0 0.6 or 0 0.65. Then it's uh, poor performance. And so by measuring the area under the curve, we can see how good our model is, how far it is from the random baseline, and how close it is to the ideal spot. To, we can calculate it using scikit-learn. So in scikit-learn, we, again, we use the metrics package, metrics, and then it has a function called AUC. I think it's called AUC, yes. However, this is not specifically for RUC curves. This is for any curve. So it can calculate area under any curve. So for that, uh, we need to let's say, let's take this FPR and TPR and AUC, then what it gets X and Y. So for X, we have FPR, 
false positive rate and for y we have true positive rate and then uh, this computes the area under the curve and the curve is uh, defined using arrays with x and y points and for us x is a pair and y is t pair and for our model so we can also quickly check it fp air and uh, tp air so this is uh, when we computed fp air and tp air manually yeah you see it's pretty close it's actually it's uh, like in four digits and four decimal digits it's the same and yeah so the one from uh, second learn is more accurate um, because we only evaluated the model uh, in 101 threshold this evaluates in uh, more thresholds so uh, there's a smart way of evaluating all against all the thresholds that this model can have so it's more accurate but what we did was uh, reasonably accurate right we can also quickly check what is the AUC of the ideal model so I don't think it will be a surprise for you. Yeah. So it's very close to one. It's not now one because so we did this again uh, ourselves, but it's almost one. And actually, if we want com to compute uh, area under the rock curve, what, what we can do is we can uh, do that, of course. So this is how we can do this, right? So we do this in two lines. So first, we use a rock curve function from scikit-learn, and then we use a C function from scikit-learn. But there is a shortcut for that. This in the matrix package uh, called RUCHC score, rook rook score. Yeah, so we what we need here is... Uh, just specify the actual values and the predictions. So Y validation and uh, Y predictions, and it computes uh, this score. So yeah, I think they're slightly different. I don't know why, but yeah, they are very, very close. Yeah, actually, I think uh, if I look at this, they are uh, the same. Ah, the reason they are different here is because we use uh, data frame scores. So let me quickly check, change this. Yeah, so now they are exactly the same. All right, so I think this is just a shortcut for this. Um, I'm not sure how exactly it's implemented inside, but I think uh, maybe it just uses these two functions. Yeah, so this is how we compute uh, AUC. AUC has a very good and useful interpretation. If we look at uh, our scores, so let's say we have uh, our customers, so we have uh, clients who are not churning, we have clients who are churning, and we all already scored them and ordered them, like from uh, customers with smaller score to customers with high score. From these customers, let's take all the customers that uh, are not churning. So these are customers, uh, the, our negative examples. And then let's also take all the customers who are churning, so positive examples. Now we want to select, randomly select a positive example. Let's say, let's take this one. And then we want to randomly select a negative example. And uh, AUC tells us what is the probability that a randomly selected, uh, this is a randomly selected positive example. And here we have a randomly selected negative example. So AUC is telling us what is the probability that a randomly selected positive example has a score that is higher than a randomly selected negative example. And we can do this many times. So here we select this. Next time, maybe we select instead of this person, we select somebody, let's say this person. And then for negative example, we select this person. Then we select this one and then this one. This probability that a randomly selected positive example has a higher score than a randomly selected negative example is uh, exactly what area under the curve is telling us. So I think, uh, let me just write it down here. So you see is a probability that a randomly selected positive example has higher score than randomly selected negative example. And uh, we can see this in uh, in code. Let's uh, say uh, we can uh, we want to select all the scores for negative examples. So we have this I prediction, and uh, for them, uh, so this is validation should be negative, and then positive score. So predictions for positive examples. So here we have scores for negative examples. Here we have scores for positive examples. So what we want to do now is we want to randomly select a negative example. So for that, uh, let's use uh, random, random package. So yeah, here we have random int. 
and um, this uh, returns a number between n a and b including both ends so we want to select a number that is between zero so what we want to select now is uh, a random uh, positive cast customer so let's say positive customer so let's call it positive index yeah so this is a randomly selected positive example and then uh, the same way we want to select a negative example right so we have two examples we selected them what we want to do next is we want to compare the score for this uh, positive example this is the score for the positive example we want to compare it with the score for the negative example and in this case it happened to be greater and we can do this many times so we can let's say repeat this um, 10,000 times so we can just write a loop and then uh, let's have variable that is success that every time this happens we increment it right and then at the end what we want to check is how many times this success when uh, how many times this condition is true out of uh, 10,000 and this is what we do and here we see that in uh, 84 uh, percent and let's make it a bit more yeah we do this experiment 100,000 times so we 100,000 times we randomly select a positive example we randomly select a negative example we check if this positive example has a higher score than negative example and then we see the total fraction of cases when this happens and you see that it's pretty close to actual AC, so it's at least it got two first digit. Yeah, maybe if we yeah if we repeat, so because it's not deterministic, it's still random, right? So it selects the customers randomly, but uh, you can see that, that it's pretty close, right? So this is a good interpretation of AC. So it tells us how well our model can order customers. So if um, so if we talk about uh, we we talked about remember the perfect model. So in the perfect model the customers are ordered perfectly. So it means every time we select a positive example, a, a customer who is going, going to churn these customers here, and then we randomly select a customer who is not going to churn, and in the negative example, they always will have higher score. And in cases uh, like this, so sometimes we have customers who are not going to churn with a high score, and sometimes we have customers who are going to churn, but we, they have lower score. So sometimes it may happen that we select this customer here and this customer here. Of course, in this case, um, the score for the negative example will be higher than the score for the positive example. And that's why um, that's why here, in some cases, this condition isn't always true. That's why at the end we have uh, our success ratio is equal to AC. And actually, we can implement the same thing, but with NumPy. So with NumPy, we, instead of doing this loop, uh, 100,000 times, we can just generate 10,000 uh, random positive indexes and 10,000 random negative indexes and then do this comparison in uh, a vectorized way. So let's do this positive index. Uh, then in NumPy we have random uh, random integer. And in NumPy it's actually this uh, low is inclusive but high is exclusive. So unlike here in the random package, it's both inclusive, but here is one, the first one is inclusive, but the last one is exclusive. We don't need to do minus one here. And we repeat it, size. we repeat it, uh, let's say, yeah, so for us, we can take n as 10,000. So we repeat it 10,000 times. We do the same with negative indexes. Negative, uh, so what we will have here is our positive index. So these are 10,000 indices of the churning customers. And here we have 10,000 indices of non-churning ones. What we can do now is we can select the scores for these customers. So first we select the score for customer number 246. Then we select the score for the customer number 705 and so on. So we have 1,000 scores of negative customers selected at random. And then we also can do the same for positive. positive. And yeah, so we will have two arrays. So in the first array, we will have positive examples randomly selected, and we will have negative examples randomly selected. And this will be a Boolean array, which is uh, false if for this particular pair, the score for the positive example was lower than the score for the negative one. And it's true when uh, yeah, the score was actually higher. 
And then we can just compute the mean of this array to get our AUC. I'll do more iterations, and then we can also fix the seed. So we get pretty close. So it's uh, at least in the two digits. And because of this interpretation, AUC is quite popular as a way of measuring the performance of uh, binary classification models because it's uh, quite intuitive and we can use it to see how well our model orders positive and negative examples and how well it separates positive examples from the negative examples. In this lesson, we talked about AUC. We discussed why it's uh, a good metric, shows how close the ROC curve of our model is close to the ideal spot. And yeah, we also talked about this nice interpretation uh, of AUC. And in the next lesson, we will talk about cross-validation, which is a way of evaluating the same model on different subsets of our data set. So see you soon.